Hi, this is God Sham God. And I'm Jose. And this is Talk to God. Hi, this is God Sham God. I'm here with my brother, the great, the legend, Rod Strickland. Oh, man. And Jose, uh, it's good to have you on Talk to God, to, on the show and all that. Um, you know, I knew you for a long time, you know, admired you for a long time growing up and things like that. You know, I was blessed to get drafted to a team that you was on and stuff like that. But going back to like when you first fell in love with basketball, what was it like in that era? Basketball started with my two brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, I lived in uh, the Bronx, New York, Mitchell Houses. Mm -hmm. We had a gym, went to school right down the street after school, come straight to the gym. But I always wanted to be like my brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched them hoop. It's, it's funny because I feel like my game is kind of a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. one of my brothers was a score, tough, you know, play hard. Mm -hmm. And I had the other brother who wanted to throw all the fancy passes, you know. <laughs> you said his name? Up. Byron Strickland said that one. My bad. Yeah, said his name, man. You said his name, man. man. Uh, but, you know, that's where it started. And mm -hmm. then, you know, just growing up in the neighborhood, a bunch of neighborhood guys, you know, as I got older, uh, and we just had a conversation, but I was a big uh, fan of Pearl Washington. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so as a mm -hmm. young kid, I went around the city trying to find Pearl and watch his game. And uh, so he was like a big inspiration uh, as well as my brothers. Then I had Tiny Archibald who would come in the gym. So I was inspired by him. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. would come in there and work out. Uh, I saw his toughness, mm -hmm. his dedication to work because he was in that gym. They had, they had uh, one court that was like his court. Yeah. They had the little basket <laughs> to where you had to shoot the ball and mm -hmm. it had to go straight in. And mm -hmm. he would just practice on that basket. So just a lot of inspiration around me. Yeah, like um, like you said, coming up in your era, you know, I was blessed to meet Tiny Archibald when I was like in the eighth grade. And he the one that kind of like used to always tell me, hey, if you, if you learn how to dribble, you always be good for a team and stuff yeah. like that. So coming up in that era, like you said, mentioned, you know, I love watching film of you, Pearl, and stuff like that. Coming up in that era, how good was Pearl Washington in that era? The best. Like, you know, every time I talk basketball, you know, his name comes up. Because mm -hmm. I, I just remember, I remember things like he wore Pac-Man Yeah, chain, the Pac-Man chain. Uh -huh. And then his girl had Miss Pac-Man on the chain. <laughs> uh -huh. you know I remember that. I remember him coming to the games and shaking guys. Mm -hmm. and then telling them to get up, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He used to have this move where he'd throw the ball off the, off the ground and go dunk it. Mm -hmm. You know, as I got older, yeah. I tried that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I just saw him dominate. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody played. He, when he first walked in the Mitchell gym, I think he was one of the younger guys playing older, mm -hmm. playing up, and he just dominated everybody, you know? Like, mm -hmm. his will was more than your will. And then I think there was times where... He, he became so good and had such a big reputation mm. that I think he walked in the gym and scared people. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you was kind of in awe of that, mm -hmm. you know? Everybody, you, just think about it. You, and I'm sure you've, you've had that. Yeah. Where no, everybody's definitely. waiting for you to walk in the building. Yeah. You know, so that feeling as a little kid, I'm sitting there, everybody's waiting for Pearl Washington. So that aura and everything, you know, that, that was inspiration. And like, I mean, for you, because, you know, for me, you was like that. You was like that for me. So how did you deal with the pressure of, like, when you got, you know, got in high school and you became, like, real good, like, Ross Strickland? It's like, you walk in the building, it's like, I have to be Ross okay. Strickland. Yeah. Because if I'm not Ross Strickland, people are, like, saying, oh, he's not that good or, he's, or he is that good. So, like, how did you deal with the pressure of having to be at that young age? I think it, it helped me. Like, I, I love that part of it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, Cause and it helped. Like I always tell you know, New York made me that competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause you know, you go out in the park and it's Joe Blow. <laughs> he's coming at you. He's yeah. talking junk to you. Yeah. He might want to fight you. Mm -hmm. and, you know, intimidate you, bully you, mm -hmm. and you have to figure that out. So, you know, you know every every every. You have to win the game, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you have to win the individual battle. Yeah. So just imagine that now. You know now when I walk out of New York City, I'm ready. Yeah. You no. know, cause I don't went through all the wars. You know, if I. If you got to fight, you got to fight, you got to figure it out. Yeah, so, you, so the intimidation factor is mm -hmm. gone. No, definitely. So, and I enjoyed that, man. I enjoyed the challenge. Just like I saw Pearl, mm -hmm. I enjoyed walking in the building or yeah. walking on the court, knowing that they're waiting for me, yeah. knowing that that guy across from me think he's going to outplay me. Mm -hmm. They're talking garbage in the stands. <laughs> they're boys talking. Definitely. Like, I enjoyed that. And I wasn't a big talker, mm -hmm. but I loved to shut them up. Mm -hmm. So... 
So uh, you coming up in that era, but people don't know you're like one of the first players, probably in New York, to like go to prep school. Yeah. Yeah, so how did that come that. about? Like you're like one of the first people. That, like nowadays, everybody going yeah, to prep school. Nobody yeah, wants to stay in the yeah. city, but you're like one of the first persons back then going to prep school. Yeah, I'm gonna tell Steve Smith he owes me something. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you, you, you got you definitely got okay or rocket. <laughs> <laughs> you got okay or rocket. Well, right no, now. it was funny because I was at Truman High School mm -hmm. with Steve Lapis. Yep. We just won the state championship, mm -hmm. and then Lap got an offer to go coach with Villanova. Mm -hmm. So he went with Raleigh Massimino. Uh, I, I think they thought I was going with him, but yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're but, trying to get you. Yeah. But he, he he went there, and then when he left, I got to back it up a little bit. I I I, I left Rice High School to go to Truman because mm -hmm. back then, uh, when you was when you was in ninth grade, when you was a freshman, you had to play freshman ball. Yeah. Then when you tenth grade, you had to play JV. JV yeah. Yeah. So my after my freshman year, the beginning of my tenth grade year, like I was killing like. 30, 40, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to play varsity. So I asked Rice, could I play varsity? They let me go up for a day, told me they would let me play varsity, mm -hmm. then they changed their mind. So I went to Truman. <laughs> so that head coach who mm -hmm. wouldn't let me play varsity, I hold grudges. Yeah. That head coach who wouldn't let me play varsity wound up getting the Truman job Wow. Mm -hmm. when Lap left. Mm -hmm. So right there, I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm not feeling it. Oh, so that's why you left. So I went in met with him and he was the cocky person I thought he was. Mm -hmm. He told me he's taking over my recruiting, bring all my letters to him. And I looked at my mother like, this ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. So Lap found Oak Hill for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to Oak Hill where Lloyd Daniels was there first. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, you know, I went to Oak Hill, never forget the first day I stepped on that campus. And I was like, wow. I know, Oak Hill's like, <laughs> no I get my, I'm coming from <laughs> Mitchell Projects right, yeah. in the Bronx mm -hmm. to like, farm animals down the street, you know, the nearest, like, real town is, like, you know, minutes, 15, 20 minutes away. you ready away. to come home at first, or? I was ready to come home. Yeah, I know. Every week I was ready to come home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I only survived because of People Airlines. I don't know, you might be too young. People, people Airlines, I don't know. You remember People, people Airlines? airlines? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm dating myself. <laughs> so, so, so People Airlines, it was a plane where you get on the plane and they come around with a cart. I'm dating myself. Nah, quick. I ain't no people's so, airlines. So, I know, can't go with that so, right now. Listen to me. People's <laughs> airlines. So they go around with a car, you get on there, you fill up the plane, and they go around and they collect the money. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, like the Chinese no, money? No way. So like the Chinese money? It's cash. No all way. Cash. No way. What? All How much was it? Like $29. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going for that. I swear. Not going for that. So I used to go home almost every weekend. People's <laughs> Airlines, look it up. Go Google it. <laughs> and that's, that's why I survived OK. Oh, Coach Smith me. used to drive me two hours. Because, you know, to get to the airport, yeah, yeah. you got to go to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Drive me two hours. I go nah, get on people's man. airline. Nah. I go to Mitchell for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and come back home for the Oak Hill. Wow. True story. Oh, uh, man. True so true then, story. you know, you at Oak Hill. You killing the course. You know, you living up to your reputation. Uh, what was, like, the top four schools or top two schools you came down to want to go to and why you picked DePaul? Uh, I had the University of Pittsburgh, which was my second choice. Mm -hmm. DePaul, I had Villanova. I, I had two strange ones. I had Georgia and UNLV. <laughs> and that was kind of strange, you know, Georgia, SEC. But that's another story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, I went to DePaul because of the, the style of play. Mm. Like, I knew my limitations. Mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't a great shooter, mm -hmm. right? But I knew I was really, really good in open court. Mm -hmm. I knew I could make decisions. Mm -hmm. So I needed to be somewhere that, that played that style. And then also DePaul was on TV. Yeah. So, you know, now we have all these channels and stations mm -hmm. and ESPN. Yeah. Back, Back then, then yeah. you didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So DePaul played on CB, uh, CBS and NBC like nine times a year. And then they had WGN, mm -hmm. which was nationwide. So it was in everybody's household. So I knew I was going to be seen. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, my first interview, I was like, I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to be seen. And I knew that. And then I was a big Kenny Patterson fan. Yeah. Kenny, uh, out Kenny of New York. Nice. Yeah, you know? Kenny definitely was nice. So, you know, I went there, I went to visit, and I asked him what he thought of the place. And if he told me, yeah, it was good, I was going. If he said no, I wouldn't have went. Okay. So then, you know, you go there, you're killing there. 
you know, so much that people from Chicago acting like you're from yeah. Chicago at that you point. Get to, do you hear people? Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Yeah, I know. They, was, they was loving you. They was trying yeah. to take that New York credit. So then you get there and you had, you know, of course you had choices to make. And it's like, you know, you could have left a year earlier. What made you like stay for another year and then come out? Yeah, well, my second year I tried to leave early. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wasn't the best student. And, uh, I explored it, and they basically told me second round. How was the process then different from the process now of trying to come out? Or is it the same? It's, it's the same. It's, I mm -hmm. mean, it's just now it's just so broadcast. You know, obviously did you have to go to camp, media. like Chicago? Did you no. play or anything, or you no. just went and spoke? So, so my first, the first year, mm -hmm. I just had an agent. Mm -hmm. Should I say yeah? I had a, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah I got you, uh, I got you. Inquire yeah. about... Mm -hmm the possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the feedback came back that, you know, second round, mm -hmm. you know, at best. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to take that chance. Mm -hmm. So I had to go one more year. Mm -hmm. And I knew in my heart that I was trying to get out there my third year. Mm -hmm. So I lift weights, like I was focused. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I pretty much knew I was leaving, right? Mm -hmm. Unless I just had a bad year. Mm -hmm. So I played that year, you know, the best I, you know, to my ability or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I was like, I'm leaving. Like, I mm -hmm. knew it. When we lost that last game, I want to say it was at Notre Dame against Mitch Richmond. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew I was gone. Mm -hmm. I knew I was gone. I was, uh, I mean, I don't even know if they told me, no, nah, if they told me I was going to go second round, I wouldn't have left. Because <laughs> back then, second round, you, yeah, you know, it's not yeah, like it is now. now. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, no, so, definitely but no. I just, in my heart of heart, it, you know, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Wasn't really interested in school. Not a good move, mm -hmm. but I, I, I was leaving. And then I imagine, like, when you came out, you know, of course, like, us being from New York, I mean, one of your dreams is to probably play for the Knicks. So then you come out, you get drafted for them there, but, you know, Mark, Mark is Jackson there. Is there. You, know, you know, Mark is great, you know, friend of mine, great friend of yours. God. Yeah, your guy. So before yeah. before you go in there, you already know Mark. He just had, he just got <coughs> uh, rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. So then they draft you as a point guard. How how was that feeling going coming into the draft? Well, I, I knew Mark knew of him. I didn't really, you know, yeah, back yeah. then yeah, we just, wasn't all yeah, like, yeah, you know, now yeah. everybody's super friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so I was projected to go from 7 to 15. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the day of the draft, I remember uh, Joey Meyer calling me, telling me uh, he thinks I'm dropping because the Lakers in Boston call. And mm -hmm. they were always, back then, they always had the last two picks because yeah, yeah. they you know, was in the championship. <coughs> so I was nervous, right? Mm -hmm. But my agent told me that Seattle said if I'm at 15, they would take me. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there knowing I'm going or thinking I'm going 15. Mm -hmm. They call 15 uh, and it's Seattle. So I'm like, wow, I start looking at the board mm -hmm. and they all got point guards. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. now I'm like, my coach just told me. So now I'm looking at Boston and, and the Lakers. Yeah. Right? So then the Knicks, you know, 19th pick come and one of the guys goes, this is you. And I'm like, huh? And But the crowd is revved up because they got Shelton Jones in the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. want Shelton Jones. Mm -hmm. Mark is in the audience holding hands. Yeah. You know, with Shelton and all that. <laughs> yeah, he did that. Same job. <laughs> so, you know, they revved up. They're going crazy and they call my name. And I got booed mm. in New York City. I was like, wow. Wow. But the initial shock for me was like, like you said, Mark Jackson was just rookie of the year. Yeah. Why you pick me? Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. so it was like I was happy, but then I was confused. Yeah. 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 So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So they drafted me and Rick Pitino basically said I was the best available. Mm -hmm. So he just rolled the dice. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel like in those, the first day of those practices? Because it's kind of, only reason why I ask because it's kind of weird because it's like, even when I went second round, got drafted to the Wizards, I'm like, I'm coming, and like, I'm like, Rod is here, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, I, you know, I'm like, man, this is Rod Strickland, and then I get mm -hmm. in practice, and you know, and I'm like, beside myself, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, because I'm thinking I'm good, I'm like, right. yeah, you know, right. this is that, right. I'm like, you know, because yes. we come from the New York Definitely. thing, so how was it in those days, like, when you first, like, you know, because you're friends, but not friends right. at the same time. Well, the crazy part is after I got drafted, it just so happened we playing at City College two days later. <laughs> it's the matchup, me and Mark. Against each other. Two days later, the line is packed in the 
And we went at each other. We both yeah. had 40 something, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, right there set the precedent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, after that, you know how it is. You, yeah. you ready, you going to work. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I know what I'm up against, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I wasn't naive to think, like, I'm going to take his spot. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. though if I could, I would, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? But yeah. I know what I'm, it just made it all start to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm going in there, I'm competing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to compete like I'm better. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then we'll see what happens from there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, rightfully so, he was the starter. Mm -hmm. I backed him up. I didn't really like that feeling yeah, yeah, definitely, of definitely. being a backup. Uh, so, you know, I pushed Mark every day in practice. Mark pushed me every day in practice. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark could tell a story, too. I almost tried to fight him in practice, too. <laughs> he just mm. came in real frustrated one day. But Let me say this, man. Let me, let me come on. Yeah. First of all, I think you're the best. Point guard not to ever be named the All Star. Appreciate that. Definitely. Uh, Facts. I was there for that. Yeah. That season. Facts. Second thing, I don't appreciate the lockout you played in Pelham Fritz and murdered all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was about fifty. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't. The, that was after I retired. Mm -hmm. It was after you retired. Yeah, it was, it was, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I love that. that yeah, he uh, he, he murdered us. Yeah. Yeah, Sixty-seven. From New York, yeah. be talking that's so, all. So yeah. Yeah. Number three. How do you feel that they compare Kyrie Irving to you? Mm -hmm. A lot of the moves he, he's doing now, you used to do, mm -hmm. and all that. So they say, you know, you 2.0. How do you feel about that? No, I mean, I see a lot of similarities, a right? Lot. The, the biggest difference is Kyrie's trigger. Yeah, like, I couldn't like shoot that. like that, mm -hmm. you know? And then his ball handling is different. Okay. Like, I was more of a reactionary ball handler, okay. you know? So I'm going to make a move, and then I'm going to react off the defense, mm -hmm. you know, Kyrie's playing with you, you know, okay. Sam's playing with you, and then making a move. So his 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 ball handling is different, mm -hmm. you know. Still the same. I mean, I'm I'm getting to wherever I need to mm -hmm. get, but this is just a little different. Uh, and as far as going to the basket, that's where I see most of the similarities. Right there. You know, taking the contact both hands. You know, using the backboard to spin off the backboard. Okay. So there's there's definitely similarities. But he's like two, three point oh. You know, he's on a different level. Okay. So, we, uh, where did you get that knack for your layup? Because you're considered the best, you know, finisher in the NBA. I think mm -hmm. ever, as far as mm -hmm. the layup. Not, I call you the layup god. That's, that's not true. dunking and stuff yeah. like that. You know what sure. I'm saying? So, like, where did you first get that knack, and when did you know, like, okay, I'm taking this to the next level? Well, again, it goes back to New York City. Mm -hmm. It goes back to being in the playground. Every time we're in the playground, what we yeah. trying to do? We trying to one up the other guy. Yeah, yeah. So you trying yeah. to figure out how I can be fancy mm -hmm. so I can get the crowd to do who's in Oz. So it basically starts from there. But then I idolize Dr. J. Mm -hmm. I, I idolize George Gervin. Mm -hmm. So again, Dr. J throwing mm -hmm. it off the back for mm -hmm. Gervin with the finger rolls. Mm -hmm. And so I studied those guys and put my own twist and flavor to it. I, uh, I studied the backboard. Billy Donovan tells a story all the time when, when he was with the Knicks before I got there. Mm -hmm. But he said he always remembers walking into the gym and I sat in there for two or three hours just throwing that ball up on. Spin moves and all that. Mm -hmm. right? Spin off the was, backboard. Yeah, just backwards, forwards, mm -hmm. and I tried to touch every part of that backboard. Mm -hmm. So now it comes to the point where you go in the lane and you get hit. Okay. Well, now I get hit, we bumping off of each other, right? Mm -hmm. Now I got a little separation, and I spin the ball up, you can't block it. Okay. Or, you know, I started, and I don't know, it's just watching, you know? Sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. kids now, they lose their creativity <laughs> because they're trying to be like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. But I had imagination. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to do different stuff. So I started, I remember in high school, I used one simple move in high school, man. <laughs> I would go up, go by somebody, show the ball, Mm -hmm. and put it on the side while I would show it and dish it off to mm -hmm. a okay. big guy. And so then I started learning like that. That works. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, show with your right, finish with your left, show with your left, finish with your right. And we we were taught we never made calls. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I learned to take contact. And finish. Right? Yeah. So every time I'm going to the basket, you get guys now, they take contact and they just looking for the foul. Mm -hmm. well, I'm looking to, for the foul and I'm looking to score. Cause I wasn't a dunker, but I saw it. I saw a big men's eyes yeah. after you end one of them, yeah. and I they that was to. a rush. Yeah, they yeah, wanted you know that, definitely. So, but so when you got in the NBA, who who was your like who you looked up to 
or who you wanted to play against bad when you got in the NBA? Well, I'm going to say this. I was a Magic Johnson fan, too. Mm -hmm. I left that out. That's why I always tried to throw a no-look pass. Mm -hmm. My teammates would be like, can you throw a pass without looking out of the way? <laughs> but Magic Johnson. And it was crazy because I had a hard time playing against Magic. Mm. Size, I idol huh? No, I idolized him so much. Oh, okay. One of my best friends, Saeed, used to be like, man, stop trying to get an autograph, man. <laughs> Play against him. <laughs> but I couldn't get, I, my first year, I could not get over that. Mm. So, now, I played against Isaiah, Kevin Johnson, you know, stop yeah, yeah, and all of yeah. them. Mm. And it wasn't the same, but Magic, mm. I just couldn't get over it. <laughs> it took me about two straight years to like really go at Magic Johnson. No, I when I the one thing one thing I remember when I was at the Wizards is um, how much Tim Hardaway used to always try to play against you because I guess because you was like yes. so big in Chicago yes. and he was from Chicago yes. he couldn't go to DePaul he went to yes. UTEP and you, you was like all, the god yeah so I used to always remember like yes. sitting on the bench watching I'm like man yes. Tim Hardaway's always ready to play when he play against Rock yeah. <laughs> So how was how was that type of matchup? And did you feel did you know the same I thing? I noticed okay. that from the beginning. I just saw Tim. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing, I, <laughs> I, we were talking, we was laughing, and then I, I pulled him close and I said, "Yeah," and I can't say. All, yeah. uh, and I was like, "I never forget the first year you came in the league and you posted me up." I said, "You know, you wasn't supposed to post. You too little to be posted." <laughs> but it was almost like he was telling me. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're a post up guard. I'm gonna post you up. Yeah. So like you said, and mm -hmm. then I found out that he wanted to go to DePaul. Yeah. And DePaul mm -hmm. took me over him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? So I, this is a backstory because yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, yeah. So you felt it. Yeah, I yeah. felt it. <laughs> like all the time. <laughs> and we kind of was a little funny style with each other yeah, for, yeah. A month, mm -hmm. for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then as the years went on, we grew and we like this. Like that's yeah, yeah. my no, guy. No, definitely. I know. But, yeah, like but it, was, yeah, yeah. it was definitely. I used to yeah. always see, I was like, man, because I used to, I loved you and I used yeah. to love Tim Hardaway and I used to be like, Man, every time Tim come in, he's yes, so he's like, like angry and turned up. Like, and I was like, man, I guess it's because Rod. And he's a went problem. To the yeah, oh, and Tim. he was a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim, 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 yeah. Tim definitely was crazy. Yeah. The other day, I was on IG and I, uh, I saw the success that your son is having. Congratulations definitely. on yeah, that, man. Definitely, definitely. Um, what do you instill in him? The knowledge that you've been through basketball wise, and um, are you tough on him? Are you a little laid back on him? Um, how do you approach that? I'm both. But okay. probably more late. No, I don't know. You have to ask him that. But I think I'm a little bit of both. But what I try to tell both of my sons, uh, like, you got to get out of this ranking thing. Mm -hmm. And you got to get out of these, these opinions from people who don't really know. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm telling you what you have. I'm telling you you're skilled enough. Now you got to keep honing your skills, keep getting better, mm -hmm. play defense, rebound, right? Stick to that, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know. Rod Tom, don't do the sham guy. You What's know it's crazy. God, no, they told me the other night. No, Christian, no, no. I was playing. No, I was playing. No, I was no, like, no, yo, no. don't be doing the sham, bro. And he came in and did, hey, yo, we do it behind the back. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I wanted like it's so funny because I wanted Sham to touch them, right? Because yeah. I again, it goes back to imagination. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I want them to be around different, yeah. innovative mm -hmm. people, like learn different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to some of these. Uh, like workout guys, yeah. you going no, just, but you no gonna do the yeah. same stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. And this game is different. You got to, you know. You feel like they should have creativity. Creativity, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's funny because, like, I know I play, yeah, mm -hmm. right. So I can have my kids on the court, and I can mm -hmm. tell them something, yeah, yeah, and I can try to correct something that maybe a trainer or someone told mm -hmm. them to do, and they'll tell me, no, that don't make sense. Yeah, yeah, like, they'll yeah. tell me. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They'll tell you that. But, but for the most part, man, I just tell them to keep getting better and try to be the smartest basketball player you can be. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you get these top kids and everybody's telling them what they are, and they get it twisted, and they really think that's what they are, and they can't develop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and if mm -hmm. you look at the draft and everything, it's the guys who keep getting better and yeah. better. Yeah. The guys you didn't hear about. Yeah. And they all rise up after yeah. a while. So just keep working hard. Like believe in yourself mm -hmm. and you know, and, and I always I always sick. tell a kid one of the most highly paid backcourts went to mid majors. Damien yeah. Lillard and yeah. um, CJ McCullough. Mm -hmm. yeah. They worked hard. No, nah, but like, you know, like Rod said, it's it's all about imagination. Like I used to tell people, I'm like, the difference now from when I was coming up, you know, watching y'all and stuff, like now, kids practice moves That's right. instead of learning how to dribble. dribble. 
Man, shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, like they, they just practice moves. So I tell them, I'm like, I'm like, it goes to the imagination because I could teach ten kids how to dribble. Two of them is gonna dribble better than the eight, and then one of them is gonna dribble better than nine because of his imagination. Yeah, you know what man. I'm saying? I'm like, I just try to give them so many moves, so like you said, they could just react. But now they come in and say, "Hey, I need to learn shit. I need to know the source." I'm like, bro, you can't even, you can't even dribble. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. So they try to skip all those steps, and I know for you sometimes it's probably frustrating because. You know, I'm on the borderline of that era. You was way, you was way before me on, on that, like where it was like Mr. Page and Ooh, fundamentals Page, and just working. Yeah. So you know, after you, and don't you know, forget Dave McCollum. Yeah, Dave McCollum, McCollum definitely. Yeah. Dave McCollum, Dave Jones, all of them. So when you was like, like he said, I always thought you should have made the All Star team many a times. Me too. Did did that drive you like each year to yeah. just try to prove a point to definitely. dudes that didn't make it? Definitely. But let's go back to the dribbling for one second, right? Yeah. Because just what you said, like Mr. Page, David yeah, yeah, Collin, yeah. they taught me how to handle the ball. Yeah. So now when I'm running at you and I'm attacking you, mm -hmm. you don't know what I'm going to do. Exactly. Right? Because mm -hmm. I can, like, I can in and out between my yeah. legs, behind my back, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, cross over, mm -hmm. whatever. So now you react in everything. Yeah. And kids are like, this is, even the Euro now mm -hmm. has become the most overused move. Yes. Now the Euro <laughs> into the defense. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So the, but the second point is, like, you're sham guard, right? So now your imagination has mm -hmm. invented a move yeah. that will live forever. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's, like... That's what I would tell kids. Like, yeah. think of Shamgar, mm -hmm. right? He created his own move. Own move now, yeah. everybody wants to do your move. And yeah. I tell my kids sometimes, do your own. Like, yeah. make up your own yeah. move. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the biggest thing, because I tell people, and they like, well, how did you come up with this? How did you come up? And I say, you know what's funny about it? I said, the first time, like, I said, I was trying to do another move, and I lost the ball, and the defense reacted. So I just reacted. It was like, so the ball's over here. I just reacted like, okay, my left hand is closest to the ball. So I just pulled it back. I didn't know it was going to turn into this whole. Right. And it's so funny because like, even like 50 Cent, like if he make music, everybody still want to hit in the club. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, before that move, I'm like, I was dribbling way before then. And I was doing so many other dribble right. moves that I think is way better than that. Think about but that, But I'm like, man. everybody, no matter, oh. when I step on the court, that's the only move they want to see. It's crazy. It's crazy. I come up the court ten times. They went, "Hey, do the shame with." I'm like, I'm like, yo, that's it was just a reaction move. That's why I, even after it, when I played in tournaments, nobody never seen me like do mm -hmm. it. I'm like because I never came up the court and say, okay, no matter what the defense do, I'm doing this. Yeah. Move. But that's how kids think now. That's how they think now. They're like, no matter what happened, I'm I'm a sham. I'm do this. But I'm do that. That's what the trainers are doing because what yeah. the trainers do is they go watch us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they see a move and they say, okay, I'm going to teach you this move, <laughs> right? But we didn't learn it that way. No, exactly. You know? on the fly. Exactly. Yeah, well, exactly. we played a lot. Mm -hmm. And then, again, we learned how to handle the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, when I work guys out, and I know they might be like, but I'm going through this simple stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, sometimes, like I had somebody tell me I worked out Kevin Durant and, mm -hmm. and uh, Cook, my man right? Quinn Cook. Yeah, I saw that. And I saw, they was yeah. like, oh, man, that was so simple. And yeah. of course it is. That's what it's simple. supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't have to have seven balls. Because if you, if you, had, <laughs> no, I know it's disrespect. I always say that. But if you gave me two balls and like all those drills, mm -hmm. I couldn't do them. Yeah. Right? But I can get in every crack, every place on the court I want to get mm -hmm. by just, you know, learning how to handle the ball. Yeah. So, you know. It's, no, because I tell kids that, I'm like, I don't even know how to spin the ball on my finger. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, I don't know how to do all that stuff. But I'm like you said, I'm like, my imagination took over. I knew I had to dribble low, stuff like that. And I'm like, it would keep me on balance. So, and I was like, what people don't give, give a lot of credit to, like what you mastered and like, and what Kyrie mastered now. Like people don't give credit on, you know, it's all about angles. It's all about angles. That's, yeah. that's what the kids don't use the backboard, man. Yeah. You use the backboard a lot in your career. <laughs> but even ball handling, yeah, I tell people, if you pick me up full court, mm -hmm. I'm going hard at you one way, and it, you got two choices. Mm -hmm. You're going to let me go or you're going to cut me off. Cut me off, I'm putting it behind my back, and I'm going the other mm -hmm. way. And it's, it's that simple. But we've created this, you know, like, I don't know, it's almost like you make it harder yeah. than it has to be. Nah, definitely. And your error coming up, I wanted to touch on that, and your error coming up, like, y'all go-to move, because I used to study all <coughs> dribblers. 
So, and it's funny that you always say that behind the back because it's like, that was Kenny Anderson crossover too. So, like, in your era, like, everybody always had the, whether it was uh, Kenny Pass, all of them, they all had the behind the back, like, sharp crossover. Yeah. You know, even to the point where, uh, when I was coming up, Kerry, Kerry Thompson Kerry used to always do it, mm-hmm. the behind the back crossover. Yep. Why did y'all do that instead of front crossover? And I have no, and I did the front crossover yeah, yeah, too, yeah. but I have no, mm-hmm. I can't even tell you that. <laughs> but again, it goes back to what we talked yeah, about. Yeah, I just yeah, learned yeah. how to handle yeah. the ball. Yep. And then mm-hmm. that just became a favorite move. Mm-hmm. But I can cross over between yeah, my yeah. legs, but that just mm-hmm. became the move. It's just like all of a sudden now you're doing the sham yeah, girls, yeah, yeah. but you got all these other moves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just yeah. from being creative. And, that's, and I try to tell kids, I'm like, and that's what people understand. So when people be like, man, everybody say shit. Well, I'm like, because I, I really dribbled before that. Right. Like, I really dribbled. So that's why people, I'm like, I used to study dribbling so much. And I was like, people was like, oh, why do you say that? And I'm like, yeah, it's a difference between handle and dribbling. And I'm like, because I'm like, I was so invested in it when I used to look at the 80s, the 90s, this and that. I'm like, when Rod, Tim Hardaway, Isaiah Thompson play, I'm like, they dribbled in a box. Yeah. Because the ball come up quicker. I'm yeah. like, so that's why the ball always was close to their mm-hmm. body. I'm like, then in my era, I always dribble wide. Mm-hmm. So then it became wide dribbling mm-hmm. and things like that. And I'm like, but in Ron era, I'm like, it's it's easy in y'all era to get back to the shot pocket because mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. in the box and mm-hmm. it was all, it was sharp. So you going through the whole process of, you know, the NBA and then, you know, you come, you know, to, you know, the end where you retire and stuff like that. What made you go into coaching or you always wanted to coach? Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. I'm just strictly basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm not thinking future or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then after it was over with, or when it was coming close to yeah, it, I'm yeah. like, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Then I thought about coaching or I really didn't know. Uh, once it was over with, I'd never forget getting cut by Houston, going home, and having nothing to do. Right, I was in the house, I'm in the basement, like lights out <laughs> during the day, watching movies or something. Like it just like it was almost like, wow, what do I do? Because mm-hmm. my whole you know, everything was on basketball. Mm-hmm. No matter what I did during the night, day or whatever, that I was on the court. Yeah. So now I had nothing to, 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 to do. And it was like, man, I gotta do something. I made a phone call, I was like I got to do something. I, I, mm. I need a job. Yeah. Because like, yeah, yeah. I almost, this is crazy part, I almost went overseas. Then I almost even went to play in Puerto Rico. <laughs> it's crazy. But I'm glad I didn't do all of that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, reached out to Cal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and he was like, come on. Come Did you already have the relationship with Cal before you? Yeah. Well, the good thing is Cal was at UMass and he had my guy. Dang, I, I'm, I'm, I can't remember his name. He was the point guard. Mm-hmm. And Cal was having some issues with him. Mm-hmm. So, you know me. He's like, yo, you might oh, okay, you know, yeah, help yeah. me out and talk yeah, to this okay. guy. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, you know, I did that for Cal. And then mm-hmm. Cal was in the league. And, you know, so yeah, we had yeah, a rapport. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he, we knew each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, and actually a couple of camps I was supposed to go. So we, we had some communication. And then he, you know, he gave me the opportunity to come aboard. Mm-hmm. And so I jumped on that. And, uh, you know, I was out there in Memphis, you know, obviously with Derrick Rose and Tariq Evans. Yeah, how was it, how was it, like, because <clears> of, <throat> I mean, of course, it's, you know, because of Cal, too, but I know as a player is mm-hmm. is mostly because of you, too. And, mm-hmm. I, and I know Cal saw that, so that's mm-hmm. why he brought yeah. you aboard. Yeah. And then you have so many similar players to you, like, mm-hmm. because... You know, before Cal, you know, Cal, like you said, he was at UMass. He had small guard, Edgar Padilla, and yeah. them, like they was Luga. Yeah. But then when you went to Memphis, you got the Derrick Rhodes and you got the Tariq Derrick Evans. Rhodes. Then when you went to Kentucky, you got John Wall. Yeah. And all. But they're all similar to you, probably mm-hmm. different in style, like right. athletic and right. stuff like that. Right. But they're all 6'4 point guards. How was it like when you first got de- like a great player like Derrick Rhodes and you had to <clears throat> teach him? Because, you know, in this era, there there's so much about self, like yeah. how was it doing Well, that? I'll say this, Derrick Rose is a different animal. Yeah. Like yeah. he was so, you tell him anything, he's doing whatever. Tariq yeah. Evans was, yeah. was the same way. Derrick humble, yeah. Yeah, Derrick they definitely. like the yeah. people yeah. got him all mixed yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Most yeah, yeah. Humble guys ever. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was easy, but the thing with like Derrick Rose, I'll never forget when he first got there, he was so unselfish. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't shoot the ball. Mm-hmm. So we started the season and 
I'll, I'll never forget, a scout came and asked me who was better, Derrick Rose and some other guy, I'm not going to say the name. Yeah. And I looked at the scout like, you're losing your mind, <laughs> yeah. like Derrick Rose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I went back to Derrick and I said, you know you got these scouts asking me about these dudes that's yeah. nowhere near you. Crazy question. And I said, because of you. Yeah. Like, you giving these dudes, like... You're playing against guys who are not that good, and you're playing down to their level. Yeah. You got to smash who you're supposed to smash, yeah, 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 and then you yeah. compete who, mm -hmm. you, who you compete against. Mm -hmm. And so we kept pushing him to shoot, shoot mm -hmm. more, shoot more. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he, it started rolling, mm -hmm. and he became a whole different ball player. Tariq Evans, never forget, he came in. We were running dribble drive. Mm -hmm. So we had him in the right corner, and... So, you know, with the dribble drive, you you know, you go to the foul line, mm -hmm. he comes out the corner. Yeah. Now, Tyreek is not a Shoot. real good shooter, yeah. and he really doesn't want to go left. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. now we got him coming out the wrong corner, yeah. and he's off the ball. Mm -hmm. So then we started watching, start, we put him on the ball, and mm -hmm. he just took off. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. And it's a lot of talking to them. Like, you know, you can work out and all that. Exactly, yeah. But the mental, mental. game is yeah, what mental. it is. That's what I try to tell people. Like, if you're training somebody or do, developing somebody, I'm like, yeah, it's easy to teach somebody how to dribble, like be a robot. I'm like, but if you can't train them mentally, that's, that's then the it don't matter because then on the court, they're not going to do what you want them to do. When, when Derek first got there, did you think <clears throat> he was the number one pick? Because if I'm not no. mistaken, when Derek, when Derek was in high school, O.J. Mayo was number one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I think it was O.J. Merritt, Eric Gordon, and yeah, then Derrick Rose. He was Rose. like, yeah, top five. Yeah, he was like yeah. in the team. So did you think, because they all, everybody thought O.J. Merritt was like LeBron, like right. the next, he was going to be the number one pick. Did you see that, like he was going to be the number one pick? And did you see this Derrick Rose before the, before the injury? And now, to me, yeah. Derrick Rose is nice. Is he one yeah. of the most, is he the most <coughs> athletic guard you've ever seen? Definitely. But when he first got to Memphis, mm -hmm. like our first couple weeks, few weeks, we were like, Man, he might be here for a few years. Mm. Like that dribble drive and all that, mm -hmm. he had to get used to that. <laughs> yeah. And then we had this little pit bull named Andre Allen. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Andre Allen. So yeah. we were doing drills, and Andre was in him. Like mm -hmm. D Rose was struggling. Yeah, yeah. But after he got comfortable, mm -hmm. but he would always do one or two things where mm -hmm. you go, wow, like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But he was struggling. And then once he got used to, you know, Andre mm -hmm. and the whole system. He just took off, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I forgot the rest of the question, though. No, and then I was talking about, like, the same with Tariq. Like. Oh, no, but no, D. Rose. So when D. Rose came in the league, I always envisioned him as almost like a triple-double guy because he could okay. rebound, yeah, yeah. he saw the court well, mm -hmm. and he could score. He came into the league, and he became that score, right? Yeah. And, you know, volume sh shooting kind of, mm -hmm. yeah. but he's a pit bull, yeah. athletic and mm -hmm. all that. So after his injury... I think D. Rose struggled trying to be that guy again. Exactly. But he still was skilled. Mm -hmm. I yes. kept telling people, if you watch D. Rose play, even when he was struggling, mm -hmm. he got to where he wanted to get to. No, no, yeah. He just was running in everybody yes. because mm -hmm. he was forcing things. Yeah. Now he's back to that D. Rose kind of yeah. thinking the game a little mm -hmm. different. Because he's still, still. super young. He, he got to be top four explosive yeah. still yeah. right now, first yeah. step. Yeah. Like, and he's not, been yeah. like that. He just, yeah. you know... He couldn't get his head right, but mm -hmm. I, I love watching him now because oh, he's yeah. the best. Yeah. He's no, I say, I say that to everybody. I'm like, when I met yeah. D, when I was talking to him, I'm like, yo, he's so humble and yeah. just just yeah. so peaceful. Especially yeah. now, he's like at peace. Like, yeah. he feels And like, he's more, he, he talks more, right? Because he's yeah. like me, introverted. Yeah. Like, he's not yeah. trying to be all in the, <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. now he's opened up <laughs> and you can see he's more comfortable, you know? Yeah. And what you think about uh, Tariq Evans when he came there, comparing, like, because, you know, he was the number one guard comparing yeah. to Derek. Tariq was, well, Tariq struggled from the beginning until mm -hmm. we had to switch him and give him the ball. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we gave him the basketball, we just went up. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And he played well. Tariq had this knack of getting to the basket. Still. And, scoring. Mm -hmm. and yeah. just scoring, using his body, mm -hmm. all angles off the backboard. Great size. Mm -hmm. Great size, great body, can handle the ball. You know, he wasn't a great shooter, but he could yeah. make shots. Mm -hmm. uh, never forget, we went to the Sweet 16. I think we lost to Missouri. Mm -hmm. And he had like 32, 4, 6, mm -hmm. all layups. Yeah. Like all just, you know, spinning. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'll never forget after the game, we got in the locker room and Cal basically told him, you know you're gone, right? You know you're not coming back. <laughs> he was like, after that performance, mm -hmm. you're gone. 
Mm. So, but Tariq was another humble kid. In the era you played, you went up against tough, tough guards, Kevin Johnson, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. You were one of the first guys I see lay Jordan, and you know he smiled mm -hmm. after you did it. Mm -hmm. Post them up, too. And post them yeah. up. <laughs> and there was a lot of hand checking. How do you think you would play where it's more open now and no hand checking? Oh, it's, I mean. Right now in this era. I mean, it makes it easier. Yeah, crazy, right? Easier. You know, I mean, it makes it easier. You know, in the game, and I know people talk about the three-point shot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'll work on that so you can get decent. You don't have to be the greatest. Mm -hmm. But I just think, like, I know how would would allow us to yes. make plays that, these guys, you know, struggle with, mm -hmm. you know, getting in the paint, making mm -hmm. plays. And then also everybody's on the perimeter. Yeah. So now if we get by the first guy, yeah, definitely. you know, that's a layup. Yeah, I always and, you we can make and, layups. and you was always top three in assists every year. Yeah, so right. imagine now. Yeah. So, I, yeah. you know, I, I love this style. I hate, like, it's too many three-point shots. Yeah. And I think that'll even out, okay. you know, as the game evolves. But I love the open style. I love the open style. Yeah, but because I say when, I, when people ask me, I'm always like, I, I'm like, I love it because every every point guard play like they're from New York. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, when you grow up in New York, the point guard rebound, assist, right. play D, do That's everything. Right. And then and I, in my era, you know, you get to the NBA, it's like, oh, the point guard got to be able to pass, go stand corner, spot hit the spot up, up jumper. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, now the point guard is the leader. Does everything. Yeah, it does everything. So when, when you and Cal, y'all made that transition from Memphis to Kentucky, and Kentucky's like one of the biggest programs in the world and things like that. How did y'all go about that? And then you had got another great point guard, mm -hmm. which is John Wall. Mm -hmm. Well, Cal being Cal, the best to do it. <laughs> you know, all the guys who were going to come to Memphis, now yeah. we're coming to Cal. Mm -hmm. or, or come, now it's coming to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So we brought that whole, you know, situation to KY. So mm -hmm. now Kentucky always had... I mean, they already have the aura mm -hmm. and the tradition. Now we got some great players. Uh, and Cal has a great way of dealing with great players, mm -hmm. you know, to let them know that he's the boss yeah, yeah. and you guys are going to come together and do it my way. Mm -hmm. John Wall, now, he was the first, like, dynamic guard, like, just, just walked in the door and Super was fast. great right away. Yeah. Like, D. Rose and Tariq, they had to adjust. Mm -hmm. John Wall came Day one. in. They weren't ready. They, his his mojo and his swag, yeah, swag. Yeah, like I never seen that. Like yeah, he was, nah, I know. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, his swag is you know, uh, and I loved him for that. And he just the charisma, man. It was mm -hmm. you know he come in dancing. And yeah, yeah. Then you had the Marcus cousin, cousins, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Eric Blesso, who didn't know who he was. Like he didn't know he was going. Are you be surprised of ever of how he become? No, because well, we didn't know he was a one and done. Yeah. But like after you saw him in the first week of practice, yeah. oh, he got a chance. Yeah, I know. Because when I saw it, I was like, when I saw y'all play, I'm like, man, the short dude. I'm yeah, like, yo, I'm like, John is nice. I'm like, yo, the other dude is nice yeah. too. Though. So it was crazy because Cal, you know, the dribble drive, the drills, he he does before he kind of starts the offense. Yeah. All attack drills. Mm -hmm. So the whole first week of practice, dudes were getting their shot blocked. Mm -hmm. But it was by Eric Bledsoe and John Wall. <laughs> like the guards wow. were blocking everyone's yeah. shots. So I was like, wow. But, you know, Cal was, a, was able to, like, hone those guys. Get a yeah, because how do you manage those dynamics? You got DeMarcus <laughs> Cousins. You got John as a point guard. Yeah. Bledsoe as a point guard. How do you keep them together where it's like, no, nah, I'm the point. I'm the man. You got to wait to yeah. you know, like that. Well, like I said, Cal is great at that mm -hmm. because, you know, Cal got some, you know, he got a mojo too. Yeah, that's why. So I he's not letting <laughs> you come in. And, and you know, I think those guys had to get adjusted to that. And then he had his assistant coaches mm -hmm. as well as myself, yeah. you know, because we got to be the guys when Cal is on them. Yeah. We got to tell them why he's on them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got to clean all that up and make sure they know. And, you know, we speak in the same language Cal speaking. Cal just had a way of like, you know, this is how we're doing. And people fought it. You know, DeMarcus fought it. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, him and Cal used to butt heads. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, after a while, I think DeMarcus realized this dude is crazy as I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's so how they start falling in line. Mm -hmm. But they were talented. Mm -hmm. Like, that group was, like, we, we, we lost in the Elite Eight. Elite Eight. I think it was. We lost the 1-3-1. The one, one. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we couldn't hit, hit shots. But that, that was a talented group. Like, you just put those guys on the court, 
Like, I'll never forget, we played Louisville. I thought it was going to be a fight every possession. Mm, were wrestling. Like, we had, they were tough, they were competitive, mm -hmm. and they were super talented. And then Cal was going against Tino yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So, like, in, in those type of eras, you know, you being a great point guard and stuff like that, uh, Kentucky, Kentucky and Memphis, it became almost like Georgia Tech, right? So Georgia Tech had, you know, all these Mark Price, these players, mm -hmm. Steph, Kenny Anderson. And then they got, um, I forgot his name from New York, the point guard, but he wasn't Steph. So then y'all got Marcus Teagues. Mm -hmm. So now he's totally different from yes. that dynamic, even though he's number one we had point Brandon guard. Knight. Brandon yeah, Knight, that's yeah. what I mean. So y'all yeah. had Brandon Knight. <clears throat> All these guards is Brandon Knight is like almost like John in them, but not John in them. Right. But he was good. Yeah. But then you go Marcus Teagues. Not mm -hmm. that he wasn't good, but mm -hmm. he was totally different was dynamic different. from them because mm -hmm. he was shorter. He, he had the same flair. How do you deal with a player when you come in like that and you like those shoes are kind of people were saying those shoes are kind of too big. Yeah. And now he got to deal with that. Yeah. You know, it was Kevin Morris at Georgia Tech. Okay. He went there after Steph. Okay. And it's like. Wow, I didn't know these shoes mm -hmm. was this big. So how do you manage players like that? Well, I'm going to say he probably was lucky because he wasn't as dynamic, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. uh, and he had some deficiencies, couldn't shoot the mm -hmm. ball. Uh, but we had the guys around him. Yeah. Yep. You know, because, mm -hmm. right, it was Deron Lamb. Yeah. It well, was Anthony Davis, Davis came yeah. later on, yep. Michael Gilchrist. Oh, yeah. So he had, you know, we had these leaders, these dynamic guys. He didn't need to do much. Right, so there was really no pressure on him. <laughs> now he felt pressure. Yeah, that's what I mean. And yeah. he put pressure on himself. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah, struggled yeah. with that. And then his brother in the NBA. Right, so, because yeah. he wasn't as dynamic. Mm -hmm. But you know, after a while, you know, you are what you are, and it is what mm -hmm. it is. And then let's figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I think he played his role to the best of his ability at that mm -hmm. time, and we won a national title. Yeah, that's why. That's why I was asking because he's so, out of all the dynamic <clears throat> guards you yeah. had, he's the one that won the national yeah, title. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. But he was lucky because, see, we were lucky to have two freshmen that were just different yeah, mentality-wise. Yeah. Not even you have AD who blocked everything, <laughs> but he was like an unselfish guy. Yeah, did whatever you needed to do. Mm -hmm. Always stayed level-headed, never mm -hmm. out of you know out of character. Yeah. Then you had Michael Gilchrist, Chris, yeah. who worked hard. He would challenge people in practice. wasn't scared, wasn't afraid to yeah, do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had some special kids. Then Deron Lamb, you know, clutch his mm -hmm. shots. You know, Terrence, Terrence Jones, Jones, right? Yeah, from Portland, Terrence you Jones. You know, so yeah. we had a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of guys. So when you go from that and then how was it in the transition from going from Kentucky then going to Florida? USF. So, USF. South Florida. So it's, it's totally different. By the way, that is a good <laughs> campus. Yes. If you don't know, that yes. campus is yes. that really campus not. that campus is nice. So really you go from that to that. How do you, how do it it felt for you? Was it like the same joy, or was yeah. it like just totally different? Well, I mean, it was a new beginning, obviously, mm -hmm. and the facilities were good. Because yeah. I remember when I first walked in there, I was yeah. like, wow. <laughs> you know, I was looking for this, you know, downgrade. Mm -hmm. You surprised, huh? And yeah, I was surprised. I was looking out like, man, this is nice. Because we played them at Providence one time. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this, was like, crazy. this is nice, and. Uh, you know, the first year is the first year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you struggle, you know, and you just figure the next year will be better. You struggle the next year. And, uh, you know, I would say this. It's different when you're in front of 25,000 mm -hmm. screaming fans, mm -hmm. and then you go somewhere and it's, you know, 2,000. Yeah. You know, the atmosphere and no, everything know, is yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it just, it, it, it was tough. It didn't work out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's, it was tough. And then being from, you know, New York and playing in New York, you know, of course, you know, Kyrie is your family. You know, what is the best advice you would give a player from New York, going from New York? Because, you know, you played in New York, then you see the history. You got Mark Jackson, you got Kenny Anderson, mm -hmm. you got Steph in New York. What would be your best advice to give, you know, somebody that you're close to anyway? So. Man, you just gotta you just gotta go play, be who you are. Like all those names you're talking about, great players, yeah. dynamic. You know what New York is. Mm -hmm. You know this is the mecca. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna hear some things, but you gotta be true to yourself and just play and hoop. Mm -hmm. And you gotta clear the noise, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not about them. You know, like yeah. you, the basketball player. That's your basketball environment. You can control that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like watching Kawhi. Yeah, right. Exactly. Ka Kawhi controlled every conversation. 
Yeah. Right? He shut him down yeah. like subtly. They didn't yeah. even know what to say to Kawhi. <laughs> you know what I mean? He let the game do the talk. Yeah, they but he was so pop, short. Yeah. He was so <laughs> short in his yeah. in his uh explanations mm-hmm. or his conversation. And I think sometimes we forget that you are in control of the interview. Mm-hmm. No matter what. No yeah. matter how someone asks you or what they answer or, or what they ask you, you you have the control. So you mm-hmm. kinda gotta learn to control the interview and stay away from the BS, and then you gotta have thick skin. Yeah, you gotta know that you're gonna be criticized, mm-hmm. but you're being criticized by people who are doing their job. Yeah, but you know they're not the most knowledgeable people. Mm-hmm. Like you know, yeah, no, nah, definitely. You know, you they ain't in the You know, we know basketball. We know <laughs> yeah. our flaws yeah. and our strengths, mm-hmm. and we know when we didn't play well and when we play well. So. It's kind of just being secure in who you are. One thing I want you to talk about is um, you're doing a beautiful thing with the kids. It's called the uh, Irvin Strickland. Yes. Mm-hmm. Talk about that. Tell them about about that. Well, it, it started out. Uh, I have an organization, mm-hmm. Young Athletes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, man, I got to be dated, but like '95, '96, in New York City, they took away like junior high school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know the the you know the money. Yeah. And so we supplemented that, mm. you know. We put together Lamar Dyson, who yeah. who, who runs it. Mm-hmm. We had a junior high school league around all the boroughs, okay. coaches meeting, and, all, mm-hmm. and we did that for years. And I, you know, I helped fund that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. And then as we grew, now you know, we, we get money from the city, state, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And you know, we just do a lot of program. We do the Kyrie Irving. Uh, Rod Strickland mm-hmm. uh, tournament in the summer. Okay. You know, we do baseball, uh, softball rather, teenage uh, uh, pregnancy prevention. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we also do things where we take kids uh, to different museums just to show them different things. Yeah. We also try to show them that in sports there's other alternatives, mm-hmm. other jobs, yeah. you know, refing, scorekeeping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, there's a lot going on that can keep you in sports, mm-hmm. um, we've been doing it forever. You know, it started out basketball-wise, it started out uh, Rod Strickland, Tiny Archibald, mm-hmm. and I took it, Tiny Archibald had a tournament uh, in Mitchell Gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. from there it went to uh, Tiny Archibald, Rod Strickland, okay. then it went Rod Strickland, then it's now it's Rod Strickland, Kyrie Irving. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we're just trying to keep it moving on. Now we, we started the AAU program, okay. the, the KS All-Stars, yeah. which is, Kyrie Strickland, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, just trying to give back in any way we can. Where did, where, where did that uh, sense of give back come from? Because I know when I was young, like your mom's was like everybody mom's, it's like crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's like crazy. you go to the hospital and stuff crazy. like that. Like Still your mom's, it, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like your mom's Still was the best it. for everybody. So did you get that from growing up? Like your mom's putting that in you and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure, mm-hmm. and and also. Uh, well, everybody loved mom. My mom's yeah, worked yeah. at Harlem Hospital for up teen years. Yeah, definitely. And I still hear stories about, mm-hmm. you know, man, your mother was so nice to me. Yeah, I came in there, I was wounded. She took care of me. Mm-hmm. And that's who she is. And mm-hmm. I, I'm sure I got that yeah. side from her. But we also grew up, we had mentors. We had guys who, Dave McCollin came in the gym. Yes. And he just took us on, mm-hmm. right? He taught me how to play basketball. He never charged us anything. You know, he did that on his own. So I always remember that. Even mm-hmm. now, it's it's always been hard for me to, like, charge kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm so glad you said that. Because I always, I always say that, and everybody be like, oh, you need to get a manager because somebody asks you something, you always like, because I'm like, like you, when I came, I'm like, they loved basketball. And I think that's probably part of the problem with the kids now growing up <laughs> because the coaches want to be their best friends with mm-hmm. trainers. My coaches, I used to go to their house and be with their kids That's right. and hang out with their That's kids. Right. Like that was eat ham and cheese sandwiches. Yeah, and it was no like, like I'm going to the club. But they, like, but they, the coach. they just, it, they just did it on their own. Yeah, yeah. So to me, it's like if I, you know, I have a kid in the gym and it's like, how much you want? <laughs> And that's hard. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know, if I'm doing a clinic yeah, or a exactly, campus, yeah. you know, that's exactly, different. Yeah. But I just remember somebody took their time mm-hmm. to, to like help me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm here, sitting here right now because of, you wouldn't have me if I, you know, didn't play 17 years or I didn't do, <laughs> yeah, nah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Or I didn't do yeah, exactly. some basketball. Yeah. So that person, Dave McCollin and all these other guys, 
they they did that out of the kindness or or they wanted to show that they can coach or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there was no monetary, like you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. They didn't get anything out of that. So to me, it's like if I you know I have people, would you work out my son? Now I work, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can't just like yeah, get yeah, in the gym yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. But if I have time and I get in the gym, I'm not taking. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not. It's just. That's how we grew up. Mm -hmm. And last question before you go. Um, I know you're doing stuff with the NBA you can't talk about, but where do you see Rod Strickland at in the next, like, four years? I, I, I really can't pinpoint it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because when I started working with the NBA, I just said I'm going to come in. I'm going to embrace it. Uh, you know, I have a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what's all out there. I'm going to be the best I can be in whatever situation I'm in. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I love it. And uh, I'm just waiting. Like now, I feel like I'm learning. Like I'm yeah, taking yeah, yeah, everything yeah. in, mm -hmm. uh, learning about the NBA, learning about what's out there. And, you know, I, I feel good about the future. And I'm just looking forward to what's, what's, what's the next steps. Thank you, my brother, Rod oh, Strick, big bro. Yes, Always thank you appreciate for coming you, on man. Talk to God. Appreciate I appreciate you, my man. And that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>